Hello. Hello. So how many of you know what an uh, emoticon is? Do you know? Okay. Yes. Do you know what these circle things are? There's a lot of different ones actually. How many of you use emoticons like regularly? <laughs> yes. Okay. Definitely uh, a lot of you doing that. So actually, I learned something just a little while ago. Uh, this is not an emoticon. This is an emoji. Okay. <laughs> And I had it wrong, apparently. This is, uh, this is an emoticon, okay? Not uh, the other thing. So there's a difference, which left me very emoti confused, okay? Or I was very emoti confusing. In fact, when I first started getting people sending me the emoticons or uh, emojis or whatever they are, okay? I didn't know what all of them were, and I started getting confused with people sending messages. I was like a dork. I was Googling, like, what does this mean? And there's this one that's like, like air coming out the nose or something. I was like, okay. Are they like having allergy problems? <laughs> or <laughs> okay, that's what most of this representing boogers. But uh, or is it like they're mad at me and they're blowing off some steam? I guess that's probably what it is, but I couldn't really tell. Uh, maybe you could use that next time you have allergies in that way. That'd be fun. Um, but it was a little confusing. But then um, you know, I started using them. I just recently I actually didn't even know how to use them on my phone. I guess I am getting older. Uh, and so but I finally figured out how to use them on my phone and I was like, oh these are cool. And now I use them all the time. In fact, I like it because I can exaggerate how I feel about something. Um, like, my friend sends me something is supposed to be funny, and so I send back, ha ha, and then this thing, you know? You know what this one means? What does this mean? <laughs> Laughing so hard you're crying, right? And so I'm like, oh, okay, I send it back, I'm like, ha ha, with this thing. But the, 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 the thing that's weird is as I'm sending this, the actual facial expression I have is, ha ha. Sand. I mean, I've never actually laughed <laughs> when I sent this thing. I know, like, same thing with LOL. How many times do you actually mean laugh out loud when you type that? But I, I can exaggerate how I feel. But it's also really handy because I'm always afraid people are going to misunderstand what I say when I'm texting. Because, like, just uh, a couple weeks ago, I was texting someone. We're trying to figure out where to go eat. And they suggested a place. And so I said, sure. But then I got worried that he's going to think I meant, sure. You know, like, whatever, sure. So I was like, <laughs> Which now means, sure, like, yeah, I like this place, sure, smiley face, okay. So now it's really clear exactly what I mean when I, when I say that. Um, so uh, I've been uh, uh, getting a little bit better with the emoticon thing. Um, now, I, I actually like getting them, too, because like the other day, I took a, a selfie, right, of myself, and sent it to my wife because I hadn't seen her much, and then she sent me back this, and I was like, yes, my wife thinks I'm sexy, okay. <laughs> And that made me very emoti confident, and uh, so, uh, in myself, and I know some of you like it when you get the little heart things too, okay? Um, and they're also very emoti convenient, okay? I have a lot of these, by the way, <laughs> that I'm not even going to use, okay, because it's ridiculous. It's very convenient because I, you don't even have to use words now when you talk to people. People ask, say, I'll be there in five minutes, and I'm like, do I, I don't want to do like K, because K is like lame. Like, I hate when people say K. So I'm just like... Ah, thumbs up, all right? <laughs> now I have the perfect thing to say. I don't have to come up with a word or anything. I just thumbs up. And that's better than saying okay. So I like these things. But the one I use the most is definitely the smiley face. Uh, and there's like 20 different smiley faces, and I never know which one to use. But I just use the smiley face, the most traditional, boring one, just to say, hey, I'm happy about what we're talking about. Okay, I'm a happy person. I don't know. Are you pretty happy? Turn to the person next to you, smile at him, and say, I'm happy I'm sitting next to you. Isn't it really sad when both people next to you look the other way? You're like, no one cares about me. I'm not happy. Okay. I actually believe that God wants you to be happy because of this right here. It says in Psalms 114.15, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. I believe he wants you to be happy and that you can be happy and that um, it's like, we all want to be happy. I've never met a single person who's like, yeah, I just love being depressed and sad. We all want to be happy. And the problem is, well, maybe not the problem. It's interesting because you want to be happy. God wants you to be happy. But a lot of times you're not happy, are you? You know what I'm talking about? You're just not happy. And the reason is because a lot of times what's happening isn't very happy, right? Um, you're like, I was in a good mood, and then your ugly face came in the room, okay? Y'all know? <laughs> Sometimes you just wake up not happy. Have you ever, you just wake up, nothing has happened yet today, and you're like, I hate today, okay? Today is terrible. And you can just wake up not happy, but a lot of times what's happening is not happy, and so um, 
we're not happy. I mean, you've had a bad day, I'm sure. And in fact, I was reading, um, there's this newspaper article about a guy. <laughs> he had a bad day. Now, if you had this day, you would have a hard time being happy, okay? I don't usually read anything, but I found this fun. Uh, a man was working on his motorcycle on his patio, and his wife was inside. He was racing the engine on the motorcycle when he accidentally slipped it into gear. While he was still holding on the handlebars, it dragged him through the glass doors on the patio, and, and he fell onto the floor. His wife heard the crash and ran in and saw her husband lying on the floor, cut, bleeding, and the motorcycle running next to him with a shattered door. So she ran and she called the ambulance, and they lived up on a hill, so she had to run down these huge flight of stairs, bring the ambulance people up. They took him to the hospital, and... Um, after he left, she noticed that the gasoline had poured out. So she put, put, it, put the thing outside and it got some paper towels, cleaned up all the gasoline, stopped it out, and threw it in the toilet. And then, so he gets home and he's kind of upset, okay, because of everything. He's looking at the glass door. And um, it says, upon arriving home, he uh, became despondent, went to the bathroom and sat down on the toilet to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> After finishing the cigarette, he flipped it between his legs while seated. His wife, who was in the kitchen, heard a loud explosion and his husband, her husband screaming. She ran into the bathroom and found him lying on the floor. His trousers had been blown away and he's suffering burns on his buttocks, back of legs, and elsewhere. Um, the wife again ran and called the ambulance. The same paramedic crew comes and while they're carrying him down the big flight of stairs to the ambulance, they ask her, what happened? And when she told him how he burned himself, the paramedics started laughing so hard, one of them slipped, tipped the stretcher, and dumped him out. He fell down the remaining flight of stairs and broke his arm. And that was in Florida, apparently. So that is a bad day, okay? Um, I don't know if you could be happy on a day like that. Now, I, I'm like, man, I've stumped my toe in the morning and had a bad day after that, okay? So um, sometimes things happen that cause us to not have a good day. Hopefully, you've never had an exploding toilet, uh, but um, sometimes things happen that cause us to have a bad day. And here's, this is how most people experience happiness, okay? And this maybe will explain some things to you. Happiness depends on what's happening. Happiness depends on what's happening. If what's happening is good, you're happy, right? If what's happening is not good, you're not happy. And that's, that's the way most people experience happiness. If, if what's happening is good, and you know, if, uh, if I get a new job, I'm happy, right? If I don't have homework, I'm happy. If I pass the test, I'm happy. If you got a girlfriend, you're happy, right? If you, um, you know, you got to go to Six Flags, you're happy. You killed everyone on Call of Duty, you're happy, okay? There's just all these different things that make you happy. But the problem is... If what's happening is not good, you're not happy, right? In fact, sometimes all it takes is a very small thing that makes the good thing not happy anymore. You got a new job, but you hate your boss, right? Uh, you pass the test, but you have a harder one next period, okay? You, um, you, you got a raise. You're getting more money, but gas prices went up, okay? Um, you went to Six Flags, but your favorite ride was closed. You were playing Call of Duty, and you keep getting killed by that stupid eight-year-old who's camping behind that little thing, okay? You know, some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you got a girlfriend, but she's mean, okay? <laughs> there's just, there's all these things that seem to ruin the happiness. If what's happening isn't good, your happiness goes away. Now, when the Bible talks about happiness, that verse we looked at a second ago, or when the Bible talks about joy or being content, it's not talking about that kind of happiness. It's not talking about happiness that just depends on what's happening. In fact, it is possible for you to have joy and to be happy, to have, be content in your life, even when things are not going well, even when things are messed up, it is possible for you to be happy. And God wants you to be able to be happy even when things are not going well, especially when things are going well. But even when things are not going well, you can still be happy. You can, not just everybody else, but you have the ability to have joy and be happy even in those times. So there's a guy in the Bible who happens to know a whole lot about this, and he, um, he wrote some good things for us about it, and his name is Paul. And this is what he says about this situation. He says, in our troubles, my joy knows no bounds. Now, he said, now most of you, if you have any trouble, you have no joy. You're like, oh, this stinks, okay? My, I'm bad day, just wait till tomorrow. But he says, in all of my troubles, in all of his troubles, he still was able to have joy. Now, I'm reading a lot of things to you tonight, but I wanted you to hear some of his troubles, okay? So when he says a lot of troubles, this is what he's talking about. And during this stuff, he said he was able to have joy. He says in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23, 
I have worked much harder. Now, you probably worked hard, right? Y'all know what that's like. Been in prison more frequently. Probably not been in prison, right? Okay. Uh, Been flogged more severely. Now, that sounds okay, right? Flogged? Flogged. No, that means they beat you in the face, okay? Um, I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I have received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. That means they whipped him with a whip 39 times, okay? Um, My grandmother had this thing. She called it a twitchy switch. Does anyone know what that is? Some of you know? Okay. So I actually never experienced a twitchy switch because I learned from watching my cousin, okay? Uh, if we mis- he misbehaved one day, and she went out to the tree. There's, she had a, uh, some kind of a tree, and she broke off a branch. It was like about this long. And they pick up all the leaves, so it has all the little things sticking out from where the leaves were. Then she makes you be bare legs, and she goes, on your legs. And he, he turned bright red, and he just goes, because <laughs> like, I was like, I am never getting twitchy switched, okay. And, uh, but he wasn't twitchy switched, he was whipped, all right. I don't know why I told you that. Three times he was beaten with rods. Have you ever been hit with a baseball bat? That would not be fun. Once I was stoned. Some of you are thinking, I have something in common with Paul. Not, not st- <laughs> A different kind of stone. That means he was hit with rocks. <laughs> Three times I was shipwrecked. I mean, after the second time, I would just not get on a boat again. All right. I spent a night and day at sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my countrymen, in danger from the city, in danger in the country. And da- He's been in danger a lot. I'll skip on. Um, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Um, so... He said in all of his troubles, and that was a lot of troubles, okay, he, his joy knows no bounds. And that's kind of hard to imagine. Now, I don't think necessarily that he was like, they were tying him up to the post, you know, and like he's about to whip him, and he's like, yeah, this is going to be great. I don't think that was it. I don't think they stripped him naked and then beat him and then tied him to the ground and he didn't have any food for days, and he was like, I just love this. This is amazing. No, I don't think, we're not crazy. We're not being crazy. But something inside of him, he was still able to find joy even when he went through stuff that most of us can't even imagine having to go through. He was still was able to find joy. And if he can find joy in that, you can find joy in your life also, even when things are not great. We can be happy, and, he, and we're going to find out how to do it. So we're going to ask a couple questions, and it's going to make it where we can easily figure out what it is. So here's the first one. Where does joy not come from? You need to know where <laughs> Satan, no, okay. No, it doesn't come from Satan. That's the right answer, but not what I'm talking about. Okay. Where does it not come from? The reason you need to know where it does not come from is because if you look for it in the wrong places, you're going to not be looking for it in the right place, okay? Now, when I was like middle school, maybe even a little younger, I had some friends, and they would do this thing where they would say something and then yell not after. I don't know if you ever had friends that did that. So they would be like, hey, man, I got you a Dr. Pepper. Not. I was like, oh, gosh. And they always did the laugh. And then, or, you know, hey, man, I like your new shirt not I was like y'all are morons okay but um so they always did this thing they would tell you something and then they would yell not okay and that means it wasn't true and there's a lot of things that we think will make us happy and we'll say if I could have blank it would make me happy but what ends up happening is we realize that it does not make us happy at least not long term maybe temporary but not long term you know you're like oh man if I just had a phone some of you remember the time when your parents wouldn't let you have a phone and you're like I just need a phone then I can be happy and you get a phone and you're happy for like a day or two and then you're bored with it and you're like okay not okay I need something else now to be happy I wish I had a girlfriend if I just had a girlfriend and you get a girlfriend you're like oh my gosh this is a lot of stress okay not okay if I could just get new parents okay maybe that would help but not okay because you can't do that but every time we think something is gonna make us happy it ends up not lasting because okay lots of things will make you temporarily happy okay this for me is liquid happy okay um it's like they found happy and joy just every time i hear that i just man now i my wife doesn't like me to drink these very much so sometimes she's like watching tv and i'll be like (laughs) as i open it so she didn't hear that sound uh but anyways and just Okay, now, the problem with something like this, and some of you it wouldn't be this. For some of you, it would just be like a bowl of chocolate ice cream, okay, from Marble Slab or something like that, okay? And for you, that's what it would be. I mean, if you just had it, it's like, that is happiness right there. And here's the truth. I'm not saying that those things don't make you happy. But here's, here's the thing. You can go eat a bowl of ice cream, and you're happy, 
but then you're done eating it, and then you keep living your life, okay? And there's, you're like, I'll just eat ice cream always and never stop, right? That might work until you're like 850 pounds in a year, and you're like, you know, they're having to change your bedpan because you can't even get up, and you're like, yeah, I eat ice cream, it makes me happy. Okay, you're not going to be happy, see, because you can't. Those things are temporary. You're happy, and then you go on with life, okay? And the problem is, is we keep thinking if we pursue stuff, enough stuff will make us happier, this relationship will make me happy, but there's all these gaps between these little moments of happiness that we live, and a lot of people, those gaps between that bowl of ice cream and that bowl of ice cream are filled with emptiness, and they're not happy. And the problem also is, is there's a lot of times when it's not the happy stuff, there's other stuff. It's the opposite of happy, and we can't be, in fact, I was, um, Interesting, like we think, oh, if I had this, it'd make me happy. I was watching an interview yesterday um, with Tom Brady. Y'all know, most of you know who Tom Brady is, okay? He's like Patriots quarterback, okay? Won a lot of Super Bowls. He, he should know about success and being happy. Um, in his interview, he said this. Uh, this was a couple years ago, the interview was. But he said, why do I have these three Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, a lot of people would say, hey, man, this is what it, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life. And he said, me, I think, God, it's got to be more than this. I mean, this can't be what it's all cracked up to be. I've done it. I'm 27. What else is there going to be for me? And as you, as you see this, his, his conversation with the interviewer, he had this feeling of like, that's it? I won the Super Bowl three times and that's it? Like, this has got to be more. It's got to feel better. It's gotta... And even winning the Super Bowl is not going to be lasting happiness for you. If you're a sports person, you get the biggest thing possible. That's not going to be lasting happiness for you. Because stuff, events, people, relationships are not lasting happiness. If anybody could tell us, could show this to us, it would be in the Bible, it would be the guy named Solomon. Okay, some of you have heard of Solomon. He was the wisest guy that ever lived, right? Did you know he was also loaded Okay, um, he, the Bible says he got 666 talents of gold a year. That's about 50,000 pounds of, of gold a year, about a billion dollars worth every year. Just gold. And they got a bunch of other stuff too, but just in gold, he got about a billion a year. His house is estimated to have been worth in today's money $3 billion. Okay, like this guy was so rich. I mean, he makes Donald Trump look like a burger flipper. Okay, he's got so much money. Oh, he's really rich. Okay, and now he, um, not only was he rich though, he had power. He was the king of the greatest country. It'd be like being the king of America back then, okay? Except there was no, there was nobody to tell him what to do. He could do anything he wanted. He had power. And you think, okay, but it's a relationship I need. He had 700 wives. <laughs> So basically, if he saw a girl he thought was hot, he was like, you're mine, okay? And he, it was his. So he had 700 rights. He had, so he had all the money, all the power, all the relationship he could ever want. And after all of it, this is what he said. It was all meaningless, meaningless. He said in all the things that he pursued in his life and all the things that he had, it all ended up empty. Because for every time he had that moment of whatever, it ended up not fulfilling him. And he always had the gaps in between. And so what... Where does it not come from? It does not come from a, a thing, a relationship, some stuff. It doesn't come from a happening. You just, I want this to happen. If this would happen, then I would have it. And the more you pursue things happening, you're not going to find true happen happiness. So if that's what it's not, then of course we want to just take the knot off and say, where, where does joy come from? If we pursue happenings, things happening to make us happy, We'll always be pursuing happiness. That's the thing. Oh, the pursuit of happiness. Well, it's just a constant going after and never quite catching. Instead, to find true happiness, we find it, true joy is in the pursuit of Christ. And you're like, oh, of course you would say that. But think about this. If we pursue Christ, then He is the focus. And we are going to find Him. That's, that's a guarantee. And then He takes care of the happenings the other things that we need. And if this isn't happening good right now and this is all messed up, first of all, I'm still, I'm pursuing Christ and that's going well and he will take the things that aren't good and he will make them right. And he could take care of the happenings, the things that aren't making us happy if we pursue him. I'm gonna show you a scripture that I bet if 
that like 98% of you have seen this scripture. In fact, if you grew up in church, you memorized this verse, okay? And so if you haven't ever heard it before, you can learn tonight. But I want to show you the verse before the one that you know, okay? Because a lot of times we know a verse, but we don't know what it means because we don't read it in context. And I actually think a lot of you probably think it means something different than it doesn't. And so we're going to look at some Philippians 4.12 is where we're going to start. And you know Philippians 4.13. But it says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Content. That means to have joy, to be okay inside. In any situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, whether I'm in a relationship or I'm single, whether I'm passing or failing, whether I have money or I'm broke. He says, whatever situation that I'm living in, I have learned to be content. And how did he do it? It's the verse that you have probably quoted and probably heard before. It's this one right here. It's, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Now, maybe you learned it like I did. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I learned the King James version of it. But I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Now, this is not something you do like you're about to go out on the football field and you're like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going to throw you on the ground. Okay, that's not what it's about. That's not at all what this verse is about. This is about when life is coming at you and what's happening is not good. You can have the joy and contentment of God inside of you because he will strengthen you. I can do all things. In other words, I can face any situation that's happening because through Christ, he will strengthen me. I will be strengthened through that relationship with Christ. So as we think about pursuing Christ instead of pursuing what's happening, I, I want you to understand I'm not saying that we that other things don't make us happy other than Jesus, okay? I'm not silly, okay? I love Dr. Pepper. It makes me happy. You like ice cream. You have relationships. You have uh, whatever. There's all kinds of things in life that make us happy, but the pursuit of our life is Christ. And when, when you pursue him, you see all this, the, the time between all the exciting things, you know, you got accepted into college or you passed that test and she said yes when you asked her out and oh my gosh, we held hands today and oh my gosh, uh, okay, and you get all these like things that feel great and they're good and those are happy and that is great, but the in between doesn't have to just be down. And then even the times that are, are bad don't have to be down because you can still have joy and contentment, you can be a moti content, okay, uh, in Christ because you're pursuing Him and He takes care of all of the problems, all of the stuff, the happenings that aren't right. Stop waiting on the right thing to happen to be happy. Do you have joy? Are you happy between the highs? Don't wait for something to happen. Oh, somebody's just going to make me happy someday. No, no one's going to make you happy. That's, that's for you to do by pursuing God, by pursuing Jesus. Take control of your joy and pursue Jesus. Make the choice to put him in the front of your life. When what's happening, I want you to think about this. Because see, some of you right now, you say, I don't have joy. I'm not happy. When what's happening isn't making you happy, this is what you do. Instead, you focus on Jesus. You put your focus on that relationship and on pursuing him and obeying him and on doing what he asks you to do. And when you do that, he takes care of the happenings. That's what the Bible says. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and he will take care of all of the other stuff. That's what the Bible says. So when I seek him first, when I pursue him, this is going to take, and that's how I can be happy. Because it doesn't matter if this relationship is all messed up right now. It doesn't matter if I don't understand it, know how I'm going to have the money to do that thing I need to do. I keep getting turned down by the colleges. I, you know, my parents are always going through this thing. It doesn't matter how messed up this is. I can trust that that is going to take care of itself because I'm focusing on Jesus. He takes care of the happenings when I focused on him. And then I can have joy because I can rely on Jesus always to take care of the other stuff, even when this is a mess. Because I'm not saying, hey, focus on Jesus and your life becomes perfect and there's never a problem. No, Paul obviously had problems and he was all in with Jesus. But through all of it, he had joy. And so can you. So this is what I invite you to do, to pursue Jesus with your life with your daily life. You get up in the morning and it's Monday and well, of course, tomorrow's Thursday, but I'm talking about on a Monday and you know how Monday is and you're just like, oh, a whole week of school and bleh. 
okay? You wake up, but you know what? You're pursuing Jesus, and you have a purpose in this day. And you're excited about your day because you're going to get to know him, and you're going to do things for him, and you have a meaning and, a, and something great in your life. And there will be great other moments, things that just make you extra happy, but you're, you're already happy. It just builds on top. And, and so I invite you to have that. If you have never pursued Jesus with your life, it starts by making a decision to follow him, to, to make him your Lord, to say, Jesus, I believe in you, and I want to begin pursuing you. Many of you do believe in Jesus, but come on, you get busy, and you start pursuing this and pursuing that, and you think, maybe this will make me feel better, maybe this will make me feel better, and sometimes the very things that you're going after are actually taking you away from Christ. They're actually taking you away from things that are happy. If I'm honest with myself, the things that the times when I've been the most down, the most sad, the most miserable were usually things that I did to myself <laughs> when I wasn't pursuing Jesus. So instead, pursue Jesus with your life. And he'll get you through the lows and the highs will be even better. We're going to pray together. And this is an opportunity for you. If you're not, if you don't have joy, if you're down, pray with somebody and begin pursuing Jesus. Let them pray with you and believe that you're going to have peace and joy and happiness even in the middle of the worst thing of your life. You could have joy and let Christ comfort your heart. If you have never given your life to Jesus and you think, you know what, I need that kind of joy. I need something between those highs or right now I'm in the middle of the biggest low and I need that. I want to ask you to come pray with me. I'm going to be in the very back just behind everybody. No one will be looking at you. It'll just be me and you. And I want you to come to me and say, I need to give my life to Jesus. I will pray with you. If you need prayer for anything else in your life, there's going to be people at both sides of the room by these tables that are there to pray for you. And they will, what we're going to do is we're going to sing part of a song together, and then we'll be dismissed after that. But during that time, if you want prayer, don't be embarrassed. There'll be others. Step out and go ask somebody to pray with you. Let's close our eyes just for a second to tune everybody else out and see what God might want to do in you right now. Father God, I just believe that every person here can have joy can be happy in you. Lord, if they're down, if they just go up and down like a roller coaster in their heart and their, in their joy, Lord, I pray that you would teach them to pursue you and give them that true, lasting joy that only you can give. I ask that you would draw everyone that needs you today in Jesus' name.